Well, I decided on uh, this morning and on the way over here that I wasn't going to teach, and um, I figured oh, you'd all excuse me for that because I didn't think I could just wrap my head around it. That was my thoughts. I thought, you know, well, you guys, you guys don't understand that. And I got a phone call on the way over here from Tanya. She kind of redirected my thinking. <laughs> and uh, and uh, that's, that's, what, that's what leadership, number one, and friendship does for you. It helps you get your mind back. Get your, get your mind back on, on what you need to have your mind on. And today I'm going to talk about practical grace. And uh, I think our misunderstanding of grace is uh, still quite evident in, in my life. Um, grace is undeserved favor. That is a gift. And uh, what do you do to deserve a gift? No. Uh, yet you're you're responsible to receive it, right? Right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure some of you've had some gifts given to you that you didn't use. Yeah, any anybody? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you're kind of ashamed of that. You're thinking, oh gosh, I shouldn't have had that attitude towards that gift. But uh, sometimes we do that. And sometimes we have that attitude towards uh, uh, the Heavenly Father and and the Lord Jesus Christ. And most of the times we don't receive a gift is because we, for some reason or other, it's not our personal taste and we don't care for it. But really the reason most of us don't walk in the fullness of his grace is because we don't think we deserve it. And that's exactly right. We don't deserve it. But it isn't about us. And as long as we keep our mind on us, we're not going to receive it. We're not going to walk in it. It's not going to be practiced or practical to us. Because, well, for instance, you might say, well, that's just too good to be true. Anybody ever said that? I mean, I, I remember talking to a lady I know. She was a good friend. And talking to her about God's goodness, and well, it's just too good to be true. Well, well it is. I mean, it, 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 it is it's, it's too good. God's just too good. He's good all the time. And, and we can't think of in the, on those terms. So we've got to learn to rely on the Spirit to communicate to us His goodness. Because you're not going to get it in the flesh because the flesh is weak. God sent the law to try to get us to... Uh, well, actually, the purpose of the law was to, to know that we couldn't walk on our own. And it actually said, well, why don't we just go to Romans 8? I wasn't going to start there, but I think maybe we are. Romans 8. Romans 8, uh, I think it's, well, I better get it exactly right, because you guys can't put up a, a, an I think verse, can you? <laughs> verse 3, Romans 8, 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. What does that mean? That means that the law could not perfect the flesh. It couldn't. It couldn't. See, and we need to understand that. The law couldn't perfect the flesh. What are you doing? Are you, what, why are you trying to perfect it? We're just not going to get it. Galatians, well, in a minute we'll go to Galatians, but in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. See, Jesus took care of that weak flesh that we have. But it's only in Jesus and only in that redemption and only in that sanctification do we have that peace and that power. It's because of his work. Go to Galatians, please. I think Galatians, I think it's Galatians. I think it's three. I am already off my notes. Usually I can talk a little bit before I get off of them, but. Oh, foolish Galatians, verse one. 
Who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. You've seen him. You've seen it right in front of your face. This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Did you receive this because you were good enough? You perfected your flesh? Or did you hear the truth and receive it? And believe it? Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit... Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? In other words, you got this when you weren't perfect in the flesh, and now you think that you're going to get more by perfecting the flesh. Huh? Isn't that what we think? Right, how many of us ask why sometimes when something doesn't happen for us? No? no but, um, a couple of you. A couple of you are honest. The Most of the rest of you, I think, do, do the same thing. Ask why? 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 Why doesn't that happen? Why didn't that happen for me? Because you're trying to, it's all about you. It only happens for you because of Jesus to begin with. Healing is a gift. It comes because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joy, is, it comes because of Jesus Christ. Peace comes because of Jesus Christ. And what happens I think with grace is the same thing. We're not, we, get, we let pride get in the way. Pride, pride will stop the Father's blessing upon your life. Because your thoughts, your mind, my mind, it, I'm not just putting you out there, I'm the same guy. I, my thoughts get in my way. My thoughts of myself, especially, get in my way. Nobody knows you like you know you. And you know you're not qualified, right? But you are qualified by the blood of Jesus. And it takes getting to a point where you just get out of yourself a little bit, or a whole lot. I think, my, actually, it might say in Romans, if you die to the flesh. And when you do that in areas of your life, and then you let the word reign, then things change. But when you continue to hang on to that flesh, the change is harder to come by. Not because God's grace has stopped or he doesn't want to shower you with blessings, but we in our minds refuse to think the right thoughts. And he tells us, you know, it's just like, for instance, with, 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 with the passing of John. I'm sure a lot of us say, well, why? Well, see, that all goes back to, oh, well, he was a good man, so, well, but see, that doesn't have anything to do with it. It's not about being good. It's not about him being good. It's not about me being good. It's not about you being good. It's about the goodness of God and his son, Jesus Christ. And whenever we stray from that, our mind will put us into sin condemnation, which will stop the flow of God in your life. It is not the sin that does it. It's the sin condemnation that does it. Jesus paid the price for sin. Our actions, our wrong actions, our wrong deeds, he paid the price for that. But unfortunately, he gave us free will and a mind to think. Sometimes I'm thinking, how, God, why in the world? And that question, why, you know. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But he doesn't want robots. He wants people that will respond to his love. He wants people that will respond to his love. We get all wrapped up in our love and this and that. And it's good to love, don't get me wrong. But our love is nothing compared to his love. And if we start dwelling on his love, we will manifest his love. Even his love, even that's not about us. It's about him.
Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Well, let's just turn over to Galatians 5 and see what the works of the flesh are. Verse 19. And if, if you don't want to read these, you don't have to, because it's not real uplifting. <laughs> now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. See any good stuff there? You want to hang on to it? That's what it says the works of the flesh are. That's what, it sa- that's what he says the works of the flesh are. So let's, not, let's quit trying to clean up this flesh, okay? Because when we start thinking about our flesh, that's where we're going to end up in. The works of the flesh. You can't go anyplace else. Because the works of the Spirit are separate from the works of the flesh. So let's not, let's, let's stop trying to clean this flesh up and put it off, it says. We're supposed to be dead to the flesh, according to Romans. Dead to the flesh. What does that mean? That our mind doesn't think carnal thoughts, not after the flesh. Let's go back to Romans right quick. Romans 8. And let's just pick up in verse 4. We read verse 3. Let's just pick up in verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh. So how's the righteousness of the law going to get fulfilled in you? Who walk not after the flesh, what, what? After the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do what? Mind the things of the flesh. In other words, our mind is on the flesh. We're trying to clean it up. I'm trying to not do this, like Paul says in Romans 7. Oh, the things that I want to do, I I can't do. And what I don't want to do, I do do. Oh, who can help me? Who can deliver me from this? Oh, I thank God that Jesus Christ, that through Jesus Christ, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And I think if Paul said that he couldn't clean his flesh up, then we ought to quit trying. Jesus did it. For to be carnally minded, verse 6, I think. Yeah. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is an enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So that then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. The spirit of God dwells in you. Verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Do we believe that? Well, let's start confessing it. Even if your mind can't wrap yourself around it, if you can't understand it, you've got to confess it. When the devil starts talking to you about your flesh, you say, no, I'm dead to that. No, I don't live there anymore. I'm going to walk by the Spirit. I'm going to receive the things from the Spirit. I'm going to walk free. I'm going to walk righteous. I'm going to walk sanctified. I'm going to walk holy because that's what the Word teaches me to do. But I have to receive it. I have to put those things on in my head. Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. The spirit is life because of righteousness. Turn to John, book of John, chapter 1. So if I want, 17, please, 117, I think 17. Um, If I want, to receive this grace, which, we, I mean, we're nuts if you don't want to receive grace, okay? If you don't want to receive grace, then something is not clicking up here. Because we want his favor on our life, right? 
right? We, we want that. One seventeen. For God sent not his... Yeah, I'm in the wrong book. One seventeen, And um, let's start in verse 15. Sorry about that, Casey. Thank you, Casey and Brendan, for, for being doing what you do. They, uh, well, they do their best to make me look better. <laughs> I'm not going to say good, but... Verse 15, John bear witness of him and cried. Which John is this? This is John the Baptist, okay? And he bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness, the fullness of who? Jesus, okay? This is, and of his fullness, of Jesus' fullness, have all we received, and grace for Grace. Now, I, I've shared this a bunch of times, but Bullinger in his notes has just, it's just really awesome. Grace for grace. Grace in place of grace. New grace, continuous and unintermitted, ever fresh grace according to the need. So it's never going to run out. His grace is never going to stop. And there's always going to be enough. Always enough. Because I need ever fresh grace because tomorrow I'm going to screw up somewhere. Somewhere in my thoughts or somewhere in my actions, I'm going to mess it up. And I need that ever fresh grace to happen for me. But I got to be looking for it. Because it says, well, let's go to Romans 5. Romans 5. And we're going to start in verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by what? Faith into this grace. We have access by faith into the grace. In other words, I've got to be walking in faith to receive the grace. I've got to trust in that grace. That's what faith is, trusting in something that we can't do. Supernatural faith, you know, I could trust that this is going to hold me up. And it holds me up. I don't take any faith for that. I trust that. I believe that that's going to work. But trust is walking out. Like I, I like to use that um, Indiana Jones movie where he's in the cave and there's a great big chasm across, or uh, whatever it is, across. And, and he knows that there's something there because the, the word promised it that there was something there, but he couldn't see it. But the word promised that it was something there, so he had to take a step. So he throws his stuff out, and you could see the walkway that he could walk on. It's like when God told Moses to take a step into the Red Sea, and then it parted. That's what faith is, is walking out when you don't see it. And that's where trust comes in. How big is your Savior? Do you trust that what he says is true? Have you been redeemed? Have you been made righteous? Can you get up in the morning and say, I'm made righteous by the blood of Jesus? See, lots of times it's hard for us to formulate those words in our mouth because we're looking at this flesh and we know it doesn't qualify. But we're supposed to be dead to this flesh. What do you see when you look in the mirror? Do you, can you see past that flesh? Can you see past that weakness? And say, yes, I've been made righteous by the blood of Jesus. Yes, I've been made whole by his flesh, by his taking a beating for me. Yes, by the blood of Jesus, I've been set free. Yes, I've been redeemed. Can we do that despite what we see in the flesh? Sometimes it's not easy. But those words need to keep coming out of our mouth. Because that's where faith is activated. Proverbs says death and life are in the power of the tongue. We either believe that verse or not. I think most of us don't most of the time. If we did, we would watch this more. We'd say, oh, I can't say that. Set a watch, O Lord, over my mouth and keep the door of my lips. That's what David prayed. There's a verse, and I keep, I keep thinking I'm going to find it, but I, I, I've neglected it. There's somewhere in the scriptures it talks, this guy says to put his hand over his mouth. 
You, you see people do this, you know. Oh, oh, that's scriptural. We need to be doing it a lot more than we do. Where was I? Eight. Eight, yeah. Eight, two. Um, Romans 5, 2. Sorry. Romans 5, 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace. You know, we can't get to the point where we get lazy and think that, that grace is something that's just going to sustain us all the time without us doing anything. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that at all. We still have to guard our mind. We have still have to put those thoughts in our mind that are, according to Philippians 4, maybe we'll get there in a minute. What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are pure? Think on these things, he says. Think on these things. Think on these things. Because it's important what we think. <coughs> God's grace will sustain us when we trust it. But we trust it by going to this word of God and seeing what it's all about. Grace is free. Grace is empowering. Grace gives us the opportunity and the ability to walk above sin. Yes, it does. That's what the scripture says. That's what the scripture says. But we access it by faith with, and with words that come out of our mouth. You know, and I'm, I'm as guilty as any, any of you. Um, I can get really good at, at um, at, at quoting, at, at speaking, and sometimes I don't feel like it. No, no, I'm sure nobody's ever been there. So what do I do? What do I do? I, I, I better change my mind, hadn't I? I better not wallow in that looking at me anymore because that's, that's why I don't feel, who's that about? I don't feel like it. Who's that about? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to. When I make it about me, I'm in serious trouble. Serious trouble. But when I make it about him and start thinking about him, it's a lot easier to speak the truth. It's a lot easier to speak those words. It's a lot easier to say I'm righteous when I'm thinking about Jesus and not thinking about me. It's a lot easier to say I'm redeemed when I'm thinking about Jesus and not thinking about me. It's a lot easier to say that I'm healed when I'm thinking about Jesus and not thinking about me. We have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Um, I didn't press my button, so I don't know how long I've been talking, but let's... Um, go down to verse well what the heck we'll just read it verse 3 not only so but we glory in tribulation also oh gosh what does it say we glory in tribulations oh my knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet for adventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended, commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Who would do that? Who would do that? Who would lay down their life Or the ungodly. Jesus. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. While we were enemies, we were enemy, enemy, enemy against God's stuff, right? 
But he saved us. He saved us. Much more. He's a much more. He's a much more God. He's a much more. He's a much more Savior. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin, as by one man sin entered into the world. Who's that one man? Adam. Adam. Okay. And death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for all that of sin. Okay. For unto the law, the sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. Think about that. Meditate on those verses a little bit. I don't think I can. This is just big, big stuff. Sin was not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. In other words, it didn't make any difference. You were born into it. That's what you got. I mean, you could have been, you know, how many, how many sins did the babies commit? When they were born, you'd think they might have been born sinless, wouldn't you? But that's not it. You were born into sin. You don't have any choice. You're born into it. I think Colossians says we've been translated to another kingdom by his dear son where there is no sin because we've been redeemed. We've been trans. We've been moved. He even paid the moving expenses. He took care of us. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Of the white gift? Free gift. Free gift. For if through the offense of many, for if the offense of one, <coughs> many be dead, much more. I told you he's much more. It's in here all over the place. He's much more. Much more the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And we have got to get to the point in our mind that Adam's sin doesn't take dominion over the redemption that's in Jesus Christ. And I, see, what happens is the natural man identifies with Adam. I've identified with Adam most of my daggone life. And even sometimes today, I still identify with Adam. Well, I'm supposed to change that in my head. I'm supposed to identify with the work of Jesus Christ and who he is and who he's made me. Right? Yes. A couple agreed. I'm going to work on that. What verse was I in? Oh, thank you. And the gift of grace, which is by gift. Get that in your head. If you don't do anything in the morning when you wake up, I want to receive the gift of grace. Tell him, I want to receive the gift of grace. I want to receive the gift of grace. The gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift... Free gift is of many offenses unto justification. You can't have committed too many offenses to get justified. The blood of Jesus took care of you. For if by one man's offense, verse 17, death reigned by one, much more. He's a much more, much more, much more. They which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. When we are receiving his grace. By faith, we will walk above. It talks about in Galatians that you are fallen from grace. Grace is a, is, a, is, is a level above walking in the flesh. It's a different place, a different realm, a different life that's available to us if we will receive it. Verse 18, am I right? Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto the justification of life. 
Well, amen. 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 We should be shouting amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And I'm going to, you know, people will say, and if you keep reading on here, I'll talk about that. I'll say, well, shall we sin? That grace can abound. That, that's how much Paul pe- preached grace. Paul preached grace to the point where people thought that he thought they ought to be sinning so that they could receive more grace. And that's what people think today, that you're thinking sin's okay. Sin is not okay. But grace will have dominion over it. Verse 21, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. And turn to Philippians 4 and we'll finish there, I think. Maybe. We'll try to get done here. We'll make it my third close and then we'll, instead of my first, and that, that way we'll, we won't be able to go anymore. You've heard some preachers talk about that. This is my first close, my second close, my third close. No, we'll just make it my third one. Verse 6, Philippians 4, verse 6. Be careful or anxious for nothing. You know, anxiety is a big deal today in, in the world. And, you know, there are a lot of things to be anxious for. If you listen... If you listen to the news of the world. If you listen to the news of the world, I don't know how you could not be full of anxiety. I mean, I'm just being honest. I don't know how you could not be. But this is good news. This is good news. Good news which promises eternal life. Good news which promises a sweet life here today. Salvation is just not about going to heaven. Salvation is about reaping his blessings today on earth as it is in heaven. It's about receiving and accepting his goodness. That's what practical grace is. Trusting in his goodness. Trusting that he walked it for me so that I don't have to because I can't. But it requires faith. Don't get tricked. Don't get tricked that this grace walk is just something that's just going to splash on you. That's what I used to think. I did. That's what I thought. And it doesn't work that way. That's why he tells us here in, in Philippians, Be careful or anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God... The peace of God, which passeth all understanding. It goes past all understanding. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I'll be reading this word and I don't understand it, but I'll still have great peace. I used to not be that way. I used to, if I didn't understand it, it frustrated me. It would make me frustrated. Now I don't care. Listen, if I could understand it all, I'd make me him, and I'm not him. i got to get to the point where I know I'm not him. I didn't write the book. I didn't do anything. All all I can do is read it. I can understand some of it. And I'm thankful for that. Don't get me wrong. We can't have some understanding. But listen, if you're going to get to the point where you think you have to understand everything, it's uh, just get to the point where you, you don't have to be there. Where you know you don't have to be there. Right? You know you don't have to be there. Because you're not him. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep or guard your hearts and minds. See, it's important that we guard our hearts and minds. But the scripture says here that the peace of God which passes all understanding shall guard your hearts 
and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. See, we are responsible for the thoughts that come in. And we're responsible to put down the thoughts that aren't in agreement with the word. Uh, talks, I think it's, yeah, gosh. Isaiah, where is that? Isaiah 53 or 4? Yeah, 54, Isaiah 54, verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt do what? So the thoughts that come that aren't of this, that aren't godly towards you, that are telling you you're not what the scripture says you are, you're supposed to what? Condemn them. Uh, Mike, I uh, made mention of Emily Dotson, and I remember her talking about it. I curse those words, and they fall to the ground in the name of Jesus. That, I mean, that, those words, were, that, they were coming out of her mouth a lot. I curse those thoughts and those words, and I, uh, they're going to go fall to the ground in the name of Jesus. Because we can't harbor those thoughts. They are an enmity against God, right? The carnal mind is an enmity, and it will fight. And as long as you entertain them, you've got, you got this, fighting against each other continually. So you use your mouth and you speak against them. You come against those words, those thoughts that come at you. You come against them in the name of Jesus. Every tongue that rises against you, against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Well, Lord, we just thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for... Uh, humility to 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 receive uh, your love and uh, to receive the work of Jesus as a complete work when he said it is finished we should rest in those words it is finished the work of redemption was finished and he got up again so that we could have eternal life we praise you and give you thanks for that work and that we can receive it and trust in it. That it is a finished work. That I am complete in him. Thank you for your goodness, your grace. Lord, thank you for blessing this people. These your people today. With the gift of grace. And in abundance. The word talks about abundance of grace. Abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. That they, that we can receive and walk free today because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. We love you and give you thanks for what you've done and what you will do. How you sent your son that he ever lives to make intercession for me. He ever lives to make intercession for me. We give you thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Got more? I want to sing one little song. Jesus loves me, this I know. Keep Ellen and her family in your prayers. Keep each other in your prayers. Reach out and touch each other and encourage one another. Bless one another with your presence in the name of Jesus. Sure love you. Amen.